Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. Although the solar system that you're looking at did not create the musical notes you've been listening to, it did create the mathematically precise pattern that creates this unusual melodic sound if you put music to it. Is this purely by chance? And what about this nearby planet that shouldn't exist? Is this simply a miscalculation in our understanding of solar system evolution or something that was created by design? And does something similar exist within our own solar system? All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon. Once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. So, venturing controversial topics once again, that is to say, alien technology or extraterrestrial civilizations. And this is in conjunction with a number of pretty exciting discoveries that have been made lately, none of which, of course, are being associated with the possible existence of extraterrestrial civilizations, even though, in my opinion, opinion, that's something that really needs to be seriously examined. Because when we encounter a solar system where a phenomena exists that defies all natural explanation, doesn't make a bit of sense as to how something like this could have formed naturally, then really we should start to explore the artificial regardless of how absurd the artificial explanation might be because the things that we are observing are so mammoth, so enormous, that the only possible explanation would be things like alien megastructures, artificial planets, that sort of thing. But when all the other explanations seem to fall flat, Well, that's really what we should be resorting to. But of course, we're not. Astronomers are not even beginning to look in that direction. Instead, they say we're going to have to completely rethink our theories about solar system formation or solar system evolution or just the very nature of astrophysics needs to be re-examined in order to try to explain how these things could have come about naturally. I have a feeling that even if all of these theories are re-examined, they're still going to be very hard-pressed to try to find a natural explanation for these very strange phenomena. So what am I talking about in particular? Well, I'm talking about a solar system that is arranged in entirely too precise a manner. Planets that orbit in a manner that is mathematically perfect in relation to one another. And even though our understanding of orbital mechanics tells us that this sort of thing could have happened at the beginning of solar system formation, it shouldn't stay that way for very long. Certainly not for billions of years, and yet that's exactly what has happened. And yet, in another solar system, we have a planet that's entirely too big for its star. That is to say that the planetary formation disk, the disk of matter that formed this solar system, did not contain nearly enough matter to account for this one planet. Assuming, of course, that this is the only planet in the solar system, it simply shouldn't exist. And yet, there it is. And it gets even stranger than that. We're talking about evolving solar systems that just disappear in the space of a few decades. That completely defies all explanation. And stars that have plutonium in their composition. An element that decays and vanishes in the course of decades. If it did end up in the star for some strange reason as a result of some sort of natural process, it should have disappeared almost immediately. Yet, there it is. How can we attribute all of these things to natural causes? And is it also possible that we have some sort of alien megastructure, some sort of artificial planet lurking in our own solar system? 
before I get started, I have something to say to the serious astrophysicists and astronomers amongst you. I am not saying that these things are definitely the work of alien civilizations or even probably the work of alien civilizations. I'm simply saying that the possibility should be explored when natural explanations begin to fall apart. And we're going to start off with the most mysterious phenomenon of all. And this is associated with a system known as TYC 82412652. Yeah, these systems have numbers that absolutely twist your tongue, but nevertheless, that's how they're categorized. This was a young, evolving solar system, something that astronomers were very interested in studying because we don't get an opportunity to check these kinds of systems out very often. And this one was discovered by NASA's Infrared Astronomical Satellite, or IARS, in 1983. The dusky disk remained bright glowing for 25 years. Like Earth, warm dust absorbs the energy of visible starlight and re-radiates that energy as infrared radiation. However, by May 1st, 2012, as a, the end of a gradual process, a paper was published saying that the dust had been gone for two and a half years. In the space of only three decades, an entire solar system had completely vanished. And this is not to say that something was obscuring it from our view, because the star was still there, just not the disk of material that used to orbit it. Nothing like this has ever been observed in the universe before, at least not by astronomers. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Perhaps a black hole passing through the system and sucking up all the matter? Well, if that's the case, it would have given off tremendous amounts of gamma rays and other radiation that tends to be emitted when black holes are gathering up large amounts of matter and we detected nothing of the kind. But what would an extraterrestrial civilization want with all of this building material? Well, maybe to build an artificial planet, such as the one, maybe, that we recently discovered in a solar system not very far away. A planet that simply should not be there. The planet in question is known as 3154b, a planet that's only 51 light years away and 13 times as massive as our own planet. In other words, roughly the same size as Neptune. However, the star that it orbits is absolutely tiny. We're talking nine times as small as our own sun. Now that sort of ratio is bizarre indeed. For a star as small, as LHS 3154, the protoplanetary disk surrounding it would have to be 10 times as massive as predictions indicate in order to give birth to a Neptune-like world in the first place. But in addition to that, it appears that this planet has a heavy planetary core, which means that the planet-forming disk that it came from would have had to have held a great deal of solid material much more solid material than should exist around a star this size. So this is an unusual planet, a planet far too big for its star. It just shouldn't be there, and yet there it is. Now, one possibility is that this planet is actually a rogue planet that came from someplace else. These sorts of things are actually fairly common in the galaxy. However, if it were a rogue planet that had gotten captured by this particular star, well, its orbit should be very strange, highly elliptical or irregular. These sorts of planets seldom set down into a predictable orbital path, an elliptical sort of path that is similar to the types of orbits that the planets in our solar system tend to have. And yet, that is not the case. If LHS 3154b did come from outside this solar system, it either arranged itself into a very orderly orbit by some sort of amazing stroke of luck, 
or it was put into this orbit because that would be much better for the climatological consistency of this planet's atmosphere. However, it also is not in the habitable zone of this star, so if this is an artificial planet made by some sort of extraterrestrial civilization, they put it way too close to the star. However, if this is a machine civilization of some kind that desires solar radiation and solar power in order to drive their civilization and they could care less about a habitable atmosphere, well, the location might work very well for them. But even more strange than this solar system is the solar system associated with Sibilsky Star. And this is located fairly close, only about 350 light years away from our planet. Planet. And although the star itself is not terribly unusual, its composition most definitely is. It contains very unusual elements like strontium and cesium, thorium, uranium, but also, surprisingly, there are also elements such as neptunium, plutonium, and einsteinium. Einsteinium, by the way, has a half-life of only 472 days. It simply should not be in this star at all. And yet, there it is, which means that it must be replenished by some sort of exterior source. Another theory says that constant bombardment from radiation from neutron stars or other types of collapsed stars might theoretically create these sorts of bizarre elements. However, there are no such stars in the neighborhood. Does that mean that a civilization is dumping these highly radioactive compounds into their star? And why would they do this? Are they trying to get rid of it because they had some sort of horrific nuclear war in their past? Or are they perhaps trying to advertise to other civilizations that we have a hell of a lot of radioactives, therefore a hell of a lot of nuclear weapons, and yet better stay away from us? If that's the case, what exactly are they afraid of? Perhaps the same civilization that gobbled up all the matter in TYC 8241-2652? Well, I sure wouldn't want a civilization like that wandering about gobbling up solar systems. Perhaps they were trying to warn somebody like them off. Again, all speculation, but interesting to talk about. But here is the most fascinating system of all. Why don't we listen to it again one more time? What you're listening to is literally the sound of a solar system dancing, with the planets interacting with one another in very precise ratios. The inner planet in the system orbits the star every two days, followed by three days, followed by six days, followed by ten days, followed by 15 days, followed finally by 20 days. And these planets have an amazing precision when we're talking about how frequently they orbit the planet in relation to each other's orbit. Now, this, as bizarre and as artificial as it might appear, is actually something that happens early in the stage of solar system development. This ratio actually exists between very moons in our own solar system. However, there is something very strange about this particular solar system that thus far has defied all natural explanation. According to several astrophysicists, including a pair of astronomers at the Paris Observatory in 2009, solar systems invariably become unstable over time as a result of gravity, as a result of their interaction with other star systems, black holes passing nearby, rogue planets passing nearby, no solar system retains this 
accuracy, this level of precision. While I say no solar system, every now and then one does correspond to this type of pattern. However, none are this precise and with this many planets. That being the case then, how did this solar system retain this beautiful and exotic dance over billions of years? Was it just lucky enough to never encounter any large body over that entire period of time? That seems highly unlikely. What if this solar system is host to an advanced extraterrestrial civilization that was able to adjust the orbits of their patterns in order for them to retain this mathematical beauty, this mathematical level of precision, and to broadcast this techno signature to the universe? And what if we are simply too blind to recognize it? And by the way, this solar system is unusual in terms of the types of planets that are present as well. A mixture of super-Earths and sub-Neptunes. No gas giants and no small rocky planets either. Very strange indeed. Now again, by design, well, I'm not going to go that far, but it's something that really should be investigated a little bit more closely, as should a possible rogue planet lurking at the edge of our own solar system. We have observed, based on the behavior of Neptune, Pluto, and other outer worlds, that there must be another planet or some sort of large body lurking at the edge of our solar system that we have yet to detect. In spite of many decades of looking for it, it thus far has eluded our best efforts of finding it. Once again, is this simply because it's a tough thing to do? Or is it because it's been trying to avoid us by design? I mean, we are talking about a planet that has an estimated three times the mass of our own Earth, and it probably has quite a number of moons as well. And incidentally, the tidal forces of Planet Nine's gravity would probably create subsurface oceans on its moons in the same way that oceans probably exist beneath the surface of Europa and Enceladus, making these moons ideal places to set up colonies but not necessarily human colonies. Might these be bases for the UAPs that we've been discovering in greater numbers over the last few years? Okay, granted, I am getting a little crazy with my speculation right now, but given the fact that we've observed rogue planets doing very strange things, such as moving in gravitationally linked pairs through the Orion Nebula for reasons that we can't even begin to speculate on, who knows, some of these things may indeed be artificial, and what better way to travel between the stars than on your own planet? Thank you very much for watching. Please like and please subscribe. If this video gets 4,000 likes, I will make another video about alien super weapons. Yes, we've seen evidence of strange things like this in the galaxy as well, something I'd really like to make a video about. Also, please check the description for various ways to keep this content coming. And as always, stay angry about space.